1 Corinthians 13, verse 11 says this. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And when I became a man, yeah. I put the ways of childhood behind me. Our sermonic thought for this morning is simply this. Grow up. Grow up, grow up, grow up. I am sure that at some point in our life's journey, we have all heard these words. Perhaps you said them to your adult children. Perhaps you said them to your co-workers or at least mumbled them under your breath. <laughs> Perhaps you said them to a family member who just keeps making crazy decisions. Grow up. Or maybe you said them, somebody said them to you. <laughs> you know you hadn't always been the epitome of grace and class like we see here on this Sunday morning morning. Maybe someone told you to grow up when you were avoiding conversations that intimidated you. Maybe someone told you to grow up when you procrastinated on chores you know you were supposed to do. Maybe someone told you to grow up when they caught you in the middle of a situation that you know you had no business being in. Grow up. All of us have had moments in our lives when we needed to be told and maybe even needed to say, grow up. But what does that mean? And how do you know when you are grown? Like for real, like what are the real signs of being a grown up person? What does it mean to be grown? Think with me for a moment. Are you grown when you reach a certain age, 18 or maybe 21? Are you grown when you get your driver's license? Or are you really grown when you purchase your first car on your own? Uh, are, are you grown when you get your first apartment and pay your own rent? <laughs> or when you finally get a mortgage after you buy a house by yourself or with your partner? When exactly are you grown? Are you grown after you graduate from high school? Are you grown after you graduate from college? Surely you must be grown when you have had your first child or you get married. Is that it? Or maybe when you are finally financially independent and you stop asking your parents for money. <laughs> Maybe that's when you're grown or when you get your first credit card or when you start your retirement account or when you start using your retirement account. <laughs> when exactly are you grown? At one point can you say, I'm grown. <laughs> what does it mean to be a grown up? Do you have to be emotionally grown up, socially grown up, politically grown up, or spiritually grown up? Hmm, perhaps that is the question we need to spend some time with. How do you know when you are a spiritual grown up? Does that have anything to do with your age or how many scriptures you have memorized or how many committees you serve on or how much money you give to support the church? How do you know? When do you know? Perhaps one might say that a person is grown when the quality of their choices is solid. Perhaps one might say that a person is grown when the cautiousness of their choices is apparent, critically thinking through the consequences of their actions in advance. Or perhaps one might say it is the character of their choices that gives us a clue about one's maturity. This is something for all of us to think about. However, I would like to submit to you a different way of thinking about what it means for one to be thought of as a grown-up person. What if? Being grown up was directly related to how well you love. What if being grown up has nothing to do with age or academic accomplishments or financial independence? What if being grown was directly related to how well do you love? How well do you love God? How well do you love yourself? And as most especially, how well do you love your neighbor? Now, this sheds a different light on our conversation because how well you love has nothing to do with your age. How well you love has nothing to do with your socioeconomic status. It has nothing to do with how long you've been a member of Metropolitan. It has nothing to do with your church committed participation or your bank account. You can check all of the boxes of the typical signs of what we usually think of as it relates to being grown. And if you have not loved. 1 Corinthians 13 is popularly known as the love chapter. 
It is a brief explanation of what love is and what love is not. It is also a description of how the absence of love overshadows the gifts that we show off to the world. And it reinforces the infinite endurance of love for love never fails. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. For love is patient. And love is kind, and love does not envy, love does not boast, love is not proud, love does not dishonor others, love is not self-seeking, love is not easily angered, love keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects always trusts, love always hopes, always perseveres, love never fails. What if being grown was directly related to how well you love? See, this might not be a far-fetched assertion given the context of our focal verse today, for it is within the same chapter that Paul talks about love. He talks about his own process of maturing. For just after he writes, love never fails, he goes on to tell us that all of the spiritual things that we think will last forever, prophecies and tongues and knowledge, they will all come to an end. And what you do not have a full understanding of now, even when you get a full understanding, your partial knowledge will disappear and love will still remain. Then, he says, when I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, and when I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. This verse could easily read, when I was a child, my love talk was like a child, my love thoughts were like a child, my love reasoning was like a child, and when I grew up, I put that childish kind of love behind me. Think about it. You can have all of the material, financial, social, possibly even emotional signs of being grown, but still be lacking in the sign of spiritual maturity, which is love. This is why you still have to tell adults by age to grow up because they are childish in the ways that they love. See, when you are childish in the ways that you love, you have no regard for people who do not look like you or think like you or vote like you. When you are childish in the way that you love, you can easily identify with the Levite and the priest in the story of the Good Samaritan who looked upon a person in need and crossed over to the other side of the road, walked by that person in need, leaving them in their pain, leaving them in their poverty, leaving them in their hunger, leaving them in their homelessness, leaving them in their grief and not thinking twice about it. You can do those kinds of things when you are childish in your capacity to love. But a Samaritan. As he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, look after him. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor? to the man who fell into the hands of robbers. And the expert in the law replied, the one who showed mercy on him. And then Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Friends, Metropolitan, how well do you love? For it is only when your love is mature that you cannot help but consider the plight of your neighbor. 
when we consider the plight of our neighbor, we are called to love them. And it is because we love our neighbor that we even consider their plight. This is love. This is what it means to be grown. When we are mature enough to love our neighbor, we respond as the good Samaritan who found the man beaten on the side of the road. We acknowledge the revelation of the condition of our neighbor that has been brought to our awareness. We then pursue education to learn more about the condition of our neighbor. Next, we offer consideration to answer how can I strategically participate in the emancipation and liberation of my neighbor. Then we must intentionally cause agitation to the individuals and the systems that have caused our neighbors to be left out, left behind, looked over, and laid aside. We activate our love through demonstrations, disruption of the status quo, and destabilization of the structures that seek to maintain that my neighbor be discarded, dismissed, disenfranchised, silenced, stabbed in the back, or sick with no consideration of their health and well-being. Lastly, after our revelation, education, consideration, and agitation, hopefully we celebrate our neighbor's emancipation and liberation. They're being set free from the legal, social, or political restrictions because we are mature enough to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, and we refuse to love childishly. Amen. Friends, how well do you love? <laughs> do you need to grow up? Or are you satisfied with being childish in the way that you live out the greatest commandment, which is to love? How well do you love God? How well do you love yourself? How well do you love your neighbor as you love yourself? Are your words, are your thoughts, is your process of reasoning childish? Or can your love from your heart manifested in your actions be characterized as love is patient? Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not proud. How well do you love? Love does not dishonor others. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. Love keeps no records of wrongs. How well do you love? Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. How well do you love? When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man or woman, I put the ways of childhood behind me. When I was a child, my love talk was like a child. My love thoughts were like a child. My love reasoning was like a child. When I grew up, I put that childish kind of love behind me. I was already in town, and Pastor Richard was like, hey, can you come preach for Metropolitan? I said yes, because I love to preach. So I decided to come to Metropolitan and tell you to grow up. <laughs> grow up, Metropolitan. Grow up until your love is kind. Grow up until your love is compassionate. Grow up until your love is concerned about more than you. Grow up until your love is concerned about more than your family and your church and your neighborhood and your clique. Grow up, Metropolitan. Grow up until your love is open-minded, optimistic, and okay with considering opinions that are not yours. Grow up, Metropolitan. Grow up until your love is graceful and grateful, joyful, and meaningful to the least of these. Grow up, Metropolitan. Grow up until your love is prayerful and repentant and intercessory for all of God's children. Grow up, Metropolitan. Grow up. Up until your love is not 
homophobic, xenophobic, claustrophobic, to the exhaustion of red, yellow, brown, black, or white people, for we are all precious in God's sight. Grow up until your love is not sexist, not racist, not classist, not narcissistic or uncharacteristic of a follower of Jesus Christ. Grow up! Until your love is inclusive and not exclusive, respectful and not abusive. Grow up until your love is generous and not stingy. Grow up until your love is affirming and not dehumanizing. Grow up. Grow up and repent of your childish ways of loving and being in the world. And it's not too late. It's not too late for you to grow up. I don't care how old or how young you are. I think you are. (laughs) Grow up. For the hymnist testifies, I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. Sinking to rise. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters lifted me now save me. all my heart to him I give ever to him I'll cling in his blessed presence live ever his praises sing love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best song faithful loving service to to him below souls in danger look above Jesus completely saves he will lift you by his love out of the angry way and out of your childish ways he's the master of the sea billows his will obey he your savior wants to be be saved today and the hymnist gives the refrain love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me Love lifted me when nothing else could help. It was love that lifted me. Metropolitan, I just came here to tell you to grow up. Grow up in spite of how your love used to work for you. Grow up in spite of how uncomfortable you think loving people as God loves will make you feel. Grow up and rejoice for how expansive your heart will become because you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Grow up. Please do not remain childish or childlike in the way that you love. Grow up. Please do not choose to ignore the revelation that brings awareness to the plight of your neighbor, the education necessary to engage in the thoughtful consideration necessary to strategize the ways you will cause agitation to bring emancipation to your neighbor. Please do not be that person. Because after today, we'll know how grown up you really are by the way that you choose to love. Metropolitan, grow up and every day ask yourself, how well do I love? God loves you and I do too. Amen. Amen.